الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين بينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ويسر الله سبحانه وتعالى that he grants us beneficial knowledge and righteous actions that he elevates our status in the dunya and the akhirah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his steadfastness until we meet him this is another session where we are looking at al aqid al-wasatiyya of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah with the explanation of Shaykh Muhammad bin Saad al Taymiyyah we got to where the Shaykh is now saying ayat sifatul maji wal itiyan today inshallah we're going to be looking at does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have actions? Can we affirm movement for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the first sifa for today. The second sifa that he gives us that we aim to inshallah complete today. We've only got 45 minutes, isn't it? What time is Salah? 45, isn't it? And then after that you've got 5 o'clock doors, isn't it? So we'll try to wrap it up in 45 minutes today. And I think next week it's going to be like that as well. Um, the second sifa, which is the attribute of the face of a Rahman. And then the Shaykh gives us two sifat which come in a dual form. The two hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the two eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in that, the Shaykh gives us a very important principle uh, to understand the dual forms for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so those are the things that we aim to, inshallah, cover for today. Right. Can we affirm actions for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The people of Ta'wil, they say it's impossible because actions require a body. Actions require time, before and after. Actions require ability and inability before that ability. So they say it's not possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actions. And if you affirm actions for Allah, then you are likening him to the creation. The Shaykh is saying here, ayat, more than one ayah. And the Shaykh just gives us a few, actually. There's probably more that we can mention. And as we will see, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the sifat. This is what the Shaykh does, yeah? He gives us a number of sifat with ayat. There's no mentioning of a hadith here. So later on in al-wasati, what he will do is he will go through all these sifat again, but with a hadith. So here the Shaykh has given us, I think, three ayat which confirm al itian Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. Specifically, Allah sub- Al-Maji wal Itiyan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. But here, the, the, the question that we're really asking, and the reason why they make ta'wil, is they say, no, it's not possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have actions. Like I said, we've got, I think, four ayat that the Shaykh gives us. But then there are a hadith as well. The hadith Qudsi, which is confirmed in its authenticity, from the highest level of authenticity, the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you go to Allah walking, what does he do? He take harwala. He comes to you running. Some of the ulama from Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah have said, look, harwala here is not established for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, we'll talk about that later. I think it's going to come in the book. And we'll have a discussion on that. But what we are basically saying here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has attributed actions for himself. And to be honest, let's just park the harwala one aside because, like I've said, even within Ahl Sunnah, there is uh, a disagreement, but there are, w- w- there are sifat which confirm the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every single Muslim accepts. In the last third of the night, what happens? Allah descends. After he descends, does he remaining descended? No, he ascends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we will see from these ayat, will come on the day of judgment to the place where the judgment will take place. All of these things are confirmed by normal Muslims, everyday Muslims. Therefore, we can confirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actions in a manner that befits his majesty. They say, the people of Ta'wil say, like we said before, no, it's not possible. Like I said, what they say that it would then necessitate that Allah has a body, there's issues in qadr, there's issues in ability, etc. So what they say is, yes, these ayat are there, yes, these ahadith are there, we can't completely deny everything, even though they try their best to split the religion up. I don't know if you've talked about this in this class. One of the things that they try and do, this is just generally for the people of Kalam. It's important that we understand their methodology. What they'll try and do is they'll try and take the text as it is. Yeah? 
if they can't take the text as it is because it goes against their aqeedah or what they will say is aql, and they don't use aql, they say hujaj, baraheen, uh, uh, dalalat, things like that. They use like nice fancy terms, but really what they're talking about is aql. If it doesn't conform with their aql, what they will then say is, okay, now we need to make ta'wil because we can't change the text. So what we're going to do is we're going to now keep the wording but change the meaning. And we've looked at that in the introduction before. So what they are now saying here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot affirm actions for him, so now we cannot change the, the, the text itself, but we can change the meaning. Therefore, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends the last third of the night, they say either it's his mercy that descends, or is his command that his descent, or his command that descends? Laylatul Qadr, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't descend. It's either his command that descends, or his mercy that descends. Yom al Qiyamah, it's not Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that will descend and come to the place of the Mahshar. They say it's either his mercy that will come or his command that will come. What's the problem with this ta'wil? Despite the fact that it's against the ijma of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, despite the fact that it changes the meaning and it corrupts the context. So the first example here, <laughs> Are they waiting for Allah to come? <laughs> they say, <laughs> Meaning the command of Allah will come. <laughs> so now the command of Allah will descend amongst uh, a shadow of clouds. <laughs> and then the malaika will come. And then the will then the affair will be then judged. So now if we were to say that the mercy of Allah will come, then does mercy always give judgment? The answer is no. Because sometimes the judgment is not based on mercy alone. It's based on justice, it's based on wisdom, it's based on... So now that's a corruption in the meaning, right? Added to the fact that like we said it goes against the tafsir of, and the ijma' of Ahl Sunnah, or jama' and the salaf. But then if you were to say أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ wallahi فِي ذُلِلْ مِنُ الْغَمَامِ That the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then going to come, but not Allah himself subhanahu. So now what we are basically saying is that Allah is not going to judge, the command will judge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this separate entity, which is separate from him, which must mean that it's created, and the created thing is going to judge between mankind. It's not possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give away his rububiyyah to a created being. When we know through other ayat, and we recite in the Qur'an every day, we recite in Salah every day, Maliki wa Mideen, that judgment on the day is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, not only does it corrupt the meaning and it go against the way of Ahl sunnah wa there's actually something which is even more worse when they make this ta'wil. Can you think for it is? Allah descends last Saturday of the night. It's not Allah, it's his mercy. Who are you supplicating to then? Are you supplicating to Allah? Or are you supplicating to his mercy? Here in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend and judge. What is it that's going to then judge? Allah or his mercy or his command, depending on what that we want to make. This now necessitates shirk. Because if a person says, oh mercy of Allah, forgive me, it's not possible. That's a form of shirk, as the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah say. You are not allowed to supplicate to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that includes his sifat. You can't say, oh face of Allah, grant me wisdom or something like that. You have to supplicate to Allah, the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
So now, if they were to say that the mercy of Allah descends, or the command of Allah descends, or will descend on the day of judgment, some of them say it's the malaika, it's the malaika that descend. But then, as you can see here, then Allah is saying that the malaika descend, and then the malaika descend. That doesn't make sense. Um, so what they are basically doing to we love can not only corrupt the meaning, go against the ijma, but it can also then necessitate shirk. Uh, we can also say from the principles that we've said before in a response to their ta'wil, which is just because we are affirming actions and sifat for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean that there is tamthil or any kind of resemblance to that, to the creation. As a separate principle, which is a principle connected to that one, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the creation with several sifat. And we all know through the sam' and the aql, meaning through the dalil and our senses, we can clearly see that just because the sifa of coming or movement has been attributed to man, that doesn't mean that the sifa of coming and movement can be the same of that of the malaika. Therefore, there is no tamthil when we affirm it, but then also within the creation there's no tamthil or tashbih. Also in a way that we can now refute them. Now this is important, I don't think we'll probably go into it as much detail in our satir, but the ulama, when they talk about uh, making um, ta'wil what they do is they split the religion into al-haqiqa and al-majaz so that which we can understand in our aql we will take that in its haqiqa because there is no problem because it's in line with the hujjah and the barahin that's what they say but that which goes against the hujj and the barahim, meaning the aql, they say that this now has to have a majazi interpretation, which is metaphorical. Now, the sunnah wal jama'ah have differed from the time of the salaf in the Qur'an. Is there majaz? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak metaphorically or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, lower the wing of humility for your parents. Some of the ulama have said that this is majaz. You don't have a wing, let alone a wing of humility. So now some of them have said, look, this is majaz. And some of them said, no, this is not majaz, but this is the eloquence and the balagha of the Qur'an. Whatever the case, that's, like I've said, we're not going to go into that, I don't think, in wasatiyah. But one of the things that we are confirming here, whether we say that the Qur'an or the Arabic language has majaz, is that if you are going to say something is metaphorical, then the metaphor has to make sense within the context. You can't say, for example, that you're going to make a metaphor of something, but it's nowhere near or in correlation with the context. So now, as a response that Ahlul Sunnah and Jama'ah have, هَلْ يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَّا يَأْتِيَهُ اللَّهِ Are they waiting for Allah to come? They say Allah to come, meaning His command to come. So a response that has been given to Ahlul Sunnah, to their ta'wil is that the Amr is different to al maji or Amr is different to Al-Itiyan. Amr is one thing and coming is another thing. Therefore, you can't make that comparison between this and that. Let me give you an example in what I'm trying to say here. If you see a lion and you see a human being, is there a metaphor that we can use for the lion and the human being? And this is what the uh, ulama uses, a famous example. Ra'aytu asadan yaktub. I saw uh, a lion writing. Can lions write? No. But what you mean now is that I saw a really brave man writing. Does that make sense? Even in the English language, you can say that makes sense. That guy's a lion. He's so brave, etc. Right? So now here in the Arabic language, they're saying, okay, this majaz, if we were going to affirm metaphorical speech, it has a correlation. But the response here is that the Amr or Rahma has no correlation majaziyan, metaphorically speaking, to Alitian. And as we will see from the evidences as well, is the ayah in Surah An-Nahl, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, he doesn't mention it here, but in Surah An-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ata amrullahi fala tista'ajilu. Ata amrullah. So now we have ata, which is coming, amrullah, the command of Allah. 
So what does that mean then, according to their ta'wil? The command of Allah... You can't even use came, can you? Because that's the meaning of the ayah. The command of Allah has come. Yeah? Huh? The ayah basically means that the command of Allah has come. What is the command of Allah? Some of them have said the day of judgment is close. Some of them said Muhammad Wasallam has come, etc. فَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلُوا Don't be hasty. Don't hasten yourself over the Quraysh. Meaning, the reckoning is close. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa sallam to say, listen, what you're doing is good, what you're doing is right, you're upon the haqq. Don't hasten their punishment. Don't hasten their adab and their iqab. Right? That's the meaning of the ayah. This is the very first ayah in Surah Nahl. But this ayah is actually proof against the whole madhab, if you think about what they're trying to say. Ata amrullah, itian means come, right? The command of Allah. So they're going to now say, command of Allah is the command of Allah. I don't know how they do it. So this is now proof to say that al-itian and al-maji or maja is different to the command of Allah or the mercy of Allah. Right, what's the proof now for us, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al Maji and Itian can be affirmed for him, uh, let alone actions, like we were saying here, really we're talking about, can we confirm actions for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Like I said, there are so many ayat and hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold the whole of creation in the palm of his hand. And what will he do? He will shake it. Movement, confirm, so many ayat and hadith. Anyway. Now here, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 210, uh, 210, not 210, 210. هَلْ يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَّا يَأْتِيَمُ اللَّهِ فِي ذُلَلٍ مِّنَ الْغَمَامِ Are they waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come? فِي ذُلَلٍ مِّنَ الْغَمَامِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be on top of a canopy of clouds. That's one tafsir from the ulama. And they have said that those clouds are going to be thick and they are going to be white in color. It's a description day of judgment. Description day of judgment. The land itself has been described. Some of them have said it's the plains of Arafat. Some of them have said it's the land of Syria, because uh, towards the end of time, and we covered this many years ago at the front, is that from the major signs of the day of judgment is that Yahanqullah, there's going to be a fire, which is going to drive everyone towards Syria. And then the trumpet will be blown, meaning the whole world's population is going to be in that location. Then the trumpet will be blown, and then they will be resurrected. So some of the ulama have said that's where they will be resurrected, in Syria. Some of them said on the plains of Arafat. Whatever the case, we know that the land will be flat. What's the benefit of the land being flat? Everyone is in the same place. Everyone is equal. Nobody can hide there's no mountains, there's no trees, there's no dips, there's no cliffs, there's no nothing. Everyone is there, naked, uncircumcised, and barefooted. Except for the people of Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clothe them with two things, with nur and actual clothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover them in nur and honor them in this manner, may Allah make us of them. Then he will shade them from the sun which will be on top of their heads. The plain is there. Every single one of these people are going to be gathered. And everyone will have a sa'iq and a shaheed. What's the sa'iq and a shaheed? Every single person will be then resurrected from the grave. They'll be coming out like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like insects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it. When the trumpet is blown, everything is going to be exposed. The earth will let go of the things that it is holding. Meaning the graves. And everyone there will be driven to this place. Every single person will have with him an angel. That angel, one of them is a sa'iq, meaning it will drive him and it will say, this is the place where you're going to stand here. It's not that you're going to go, you know, you're going to be resurrected from your grave and you're going to go wherever you want. The angel is going to push you and say, this is your location that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed 50,000 years before he created the heavens and earth. This is the day of standing and this is where you will stand for 50,000 years. Sa'iq and the shaheed. The shaheed is the malak, the angel that's going to be next to you, and he's going to have your book of deeds, and he's going to stand there. Those two angels will be appointed to stand over every single individual. How many people? Trillions and gazillions, Allah knows best, of souls going to be resurrected. That's just for man, let alone jinn, Allah knows best how many of them there are. They were here before us. 
resurrected. Now some of them are going to be handcuffed and some of them are going to be in chains, some of them are going to be... Then there's going to be darkness because the Messenger of Allah said that that is the day of darkness. But then the sun will be placed on top of their heads. And a meal, some of the ulama have said that is a mile. And some of them said it's, it's shorter than this pencil. That Imagine the sun shorter than this pencil. That's how short, that's how close it is on top of your head. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, says, in the life of this dunya, we can feel the intensity of the heat of the sun, right? That's despite the fact that it has an orbit. That's despite the fact that it's so far away and there are different seasons. On that day, it's just going to be there suspended. That close. That's an adab in itself. So now here, man will stand. Man will stand on that day. Until when? Until the Messenger of Allah Wasallam will supplicate. So now there will be people underneath the Arsh of Rahman. May Allah make us of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give every single Nabi, likulli Nabi in hope. Every single one of them will have a pool where they'll go and drink from. Some of those Anbiya will be plentiful. Some of them, they'll just be going by themselves. Nobody accepted from their Ummah. They'll be there drinking from the pool from himself. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described our hold as being the biggest and the most beautiful. And then he will bring people in to drink. He will say, all of you, come and drink, come and drink. Until the Malaik will be there also, stopping a group of people saying, you do not know what they did after you. Either from bid'ah, from leaving the manhaj, which is Salim, or because of major sins and they didn't make tawbah from it. Those people will be then prevented. But the Messenger of Allah وسلم, will plead for them still until the Malaika say, listen, you don't know what they did after you. Then what does he say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? A moment ago he says, come and drink, my ummah, ummati. He now will say, فَسُحْقًا سُحْقًا Get away from me, I've got nothing to do with you. Imagine if the Messenger of Allah وسلم, says that about us or people that we know. This is not just the Messenger of Allah وسلم, but this is also a day of desperation. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will feed them from the hold once they have fed from the hold, once they have drunk from it, they will go from each Nabi, go to Adam, or to Noor, Ibrahim, Musa, every single one of these four will say, not me, I've done something wrong in my life. These are all al-azm, most of them. So how about us? Even though they haven't really done anything wrong, until they go to Isa, and he will say, anna laha, it's not for me, go to Muhammad. Muhammad will go underneath the Arsh of Rahman in a designated place which we supplicate for on a daily basis from the adhkar of the adhan and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lift your head, irfa rasik sal tu'ta ask and you will be given ishfa' to shafa' intercede and your intercession will be accepted then he will say ummati ya Rabbi at that point there all you need to say is oh Allah save me because of that position there, I'm sure a lot of people will be like really selfish on that moment. That Allah says to you on the day of judgment, what do you want? Save me, just put me in Jannah. Look what's happening out there. The Messenger of Allah from those two angels that he described, one sa'iq and the shaheed, the Messenger of Allah said, some of these malaik on the day of judgment between his shoulder and his, and his earlobe, 500 years of man's travel. Imagine you've got two angels standing there on top of your head like that. Imagine the, the toe to the, to the head, the, the head to the toe. Imagine how big this angel is. They're standing there. You're completely in a position. May Allah save us from that. I mean, we don't want to be in that position. But people are going to be in that position. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to this individual, what do you want? Imagine he can easily just say, put me in Jannah. And that's it. Save me from what's happening over there. Spare me. He will say, Ummati, three times. Ummati, Ya Rab. Ummati, Ya Rab. Ummati, Ya Rab. My nation. They believed in your oneness. Then the ulama have said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then descend with, as the Shaykh is saying here, meaning, meaning thick white clouds. And the Shaykh is saying here, this will add to the beauty and the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his adhama as well, because these clouds now will be descending. Now the Shaykh actually makes a point here, which is a very important benefit, which he says, do not leave it. That when you've had this ayah, do not leave it until the day of judgment, until Allah comes, that now you're going to have ikhlas. But here, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many signs. Allah, I mean, you can look at the clouds now and think about the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many signs from the kawniya and the sharia for help us to, to prepare for that day. And then the malaika will descend. Uh, in the footnotes here, um, where am I? There is a hadith which talks about the descri- description, but I think what we've added is sufficient. And I think, like I said, the hadith will come later on. So that's the first ayah. The point here, we've had a description of the judgment, there's a lot of benefit in this ayah, but here the point is, إِلَّا We can confirm in a manner that befits His Majesty, which does not resemble the creation. In what, in whatsoever, in any shape, in any name, shape, or form, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will descend. We confirm the meaning, and I just said name, but we confirm the meaning. What we reject or we don't know is the how. Al Ayatania, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says towards the end of Surah Al Am. Are they waiting for the malaika to come? O Yatiya Rabb O Yatiya Oh your Lord to come. O Yatiya Ba'du Ayati Rabbik. Or they are waiting for some of the ayat, meaning the signs of the day of judgment to come. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completes the ayah by saying that when that day comes, then you nafsan imanuha lam takun amanat bin qabl. When that actually happens, and this is what the Shaykh is saying from the benefit from the previous ayah as well, is don't wait. That when you see that happening, Iman is not going to benefit you in the slightest. It's too late. This is because once the major signs, or the last one, which is the, 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 the sun rising from the west, the doors of Tawbah are then closed. And Iman will not benefit people. This is because people will see that and they will actually try to have Iman, but it will not be accepted. Yes, Ibrahim. Al ayah thalitha, kalla idha dukkati al ardu dakkan dakka. This ayah here in Surah Al Fajr is, I would say, probably from the Umda and the Asal. Um, all of the Salaf have used this really uh, for their proof, but I guess the Sheikh is using it because of the, the order of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا Now this ayah, all of these ayat mean the same thing really, if you think about it. The first in Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that your Lord will come, there will be clouds, and then the malaika. Yeah? But it doesn't mention the sufuf. The second ayah is that, are they waiting for the malaika to come, and then the Lord to come? Similar to Baqarah. But here, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ Your Lord will come, وَالْمَلَائِكَ تُصَفًّا صَفًّا so now here, this is a description of what we have in Al-Baqarah, is that the Malaika will also descend, but they will be in rows. Remember, Malaika, that the Messenger of Allah Wasallam gave us a description of, some of them, from their earlobe to their shoulder, 500 years of man's travel. Therefore, the Sheikh is saying here, to summarize this sifa, وَأَهْلَ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاءِ يُثْبِتُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْتِي بِنَفْسِهِ هُوَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come him himself. Why is he saying that? Because the people of Ta'wi will say, Allah will not come, but his command will come or his mercy will come. Do we know how? La na'lamu. The kayf, we don't know. The meaning is known. But how? We do not know how he will come subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to summarize, as a benefit, as this is what the Shaykh's habit is now throughout the book, is that if we know that this is going to happen, then the person needs to seclude himself with his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala before he is presented in front of him. On that day, he's got no choice except to stand in front of him. On that day, you've got no choice except to stand in front of him and be alone with him when he questions you. So the Shaykh is saying here, when you read these ayah that Allah is going to come, this is now has to, yulad insan, it has to give birth to the human being Rahba wa khawf min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa istiqama ala deenin. Love and fear and hope and steadfastness on doing good deeds. Sifa al wajh, the attribute of the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we are seeing a comparison. We've done this before. There are some sifat which are from the fi'liya, that he does them whenever he wants, however he wants. and Al-Ityan is of that, but then there are sifat 
which are dhatiya and there are some sifat which are khabariya Now, what we mean by khabariya is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his that to us. So now from the khabariya, these are connected to the that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself, but we don't know anything else beyond that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has a face. What does he do with his face? We don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms for us that he has a shin. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose his shin confirm that part of his that that he has a shin and now that is khabar which is information which is uh, describing his that that Allah has a shin in a manner that befits his majesty what does he do with the shin? we don't know therefore here is an important benefit which is that some of the sifat are khabariya the people of ta'wil they say sifa al-waj means what does it mean? do they accept it? No, they don't accept it. Why? Because it means that he has to have a head. If he's got a head, it means he's got a body. If he's got a body, then all the things that we said before. So what do they say? Huh? Huh? Face can refer either to the reward or the acceptance, which is similar to reward. If you want, you could put mercy as well. And sometimes they will say, Allah doesn't have a face, but we are reminded of the face of Allah for our sake of having ikhlas. So we feed you for the face of Allah. Not that Allah has a face. Our feeding is connected to the face of Allah, meaning so that we have ikhlas. So that's how they make that wheel. And we did this with love before as well, right? Because they say Allah doesn't love and He cannot be loved. So not only do they make that wheel in the sifa, but they also make that wheel in the connection and the relationship between the khaliq and the makhluq. And it's similar to here as well. Right. What's the dalil? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Rahman, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ والإكرام. The face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain. Now, here Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah have a principle, which is that if there is something which is from the dhatiya and is from the khabariya, it is connected to Allah himself subhanahu And nobody can understand from this that the face of Allah will remain and everything else will perish, including the rest of Allah. Billah. Because that would necessitate imperfection for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah doesn't have any imperfections. وَلَا تَضْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ الْأَمْثَالِ وَلَا الْأَسْمَانِ الْحُسْنَى And there are many ayat which confirm his perfection, subhanahu. Uh, in this, also, in the Arabic language, Confirmation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَبْقَى رَبُّكَ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو Now this word ذو comes after the Rabbik, for fair enough. But the word ذو in the Arabic language is a preposition. And this preposition refers to al-musahaba. Meaning, nobody can then say, that the one who is dhu something doesn't actually have that thing. I don't know if you're following me on this because this requires, you know, Arabic language. If you've done Ajumiya before, you probably know what I'm talking about. But you have dhu the dhi, right? Here, dhu is referring to al-musahaba. So now we can say, for example, Ibrahim dhu dhaka. Ibrahim is a very intelligent person. Now I'm using the word dhu here to describe this intelligence and this, you know, this ability of his to be part of him. To affirm this for Ibrahim. This is how it is in the Arabic language. So nobody, so the Sheikh is saying, nobody can then say that this dhu can be then made ta'wil of. Because in the Arabic language, it refers to musahaba. Al-ayah thaniya. كل شيء هالك إلا وجه everything will perish similar to what we saw from that ويبقى وجهه in this ayah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in Surah Al Qasas كل شيء everything will perish except for his face now we're going to do this inshallah in the wasatiyah there is a description there judgment we saw a little bit today but there's more detail to that but I just want to add to this where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says كل شيء هالك everything will perish some of the ulama have said everything which has a soul 
So now the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila say, ah, look, you say that Jannah and Jahannam will never cease to exist. So what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment? We'll say, ah, you haven't got us on this. This is because those things which don't have a soul will not perish on that day, including Jannah itself, including Jahannam itself, including the Arsh of Ar-Rahman. Every single human being, every single jinn, what about the malaika? Every single one of the malaika. This now proves for us that they have souls and they are created beings and they've got to cleave, etc. Will all perish. And that's the meaning now here that everything will perish. Kullu shay'in halik. Illa wajah. Except for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from this we also then learn that uh, we are talking about the sifa being connected to Allah. Now the shaykh gives us a very good point here. What's the difference between the first ayah in Rahman and the second ayah in Al-Qasas? The first ayah, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ rabbik, The face of Allah will remain. This is now connected to the rububiyah and asma'u sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he uses the word Rabb. So now there is a relationship between rububiyah and asma'u wa sifat. As for the ayah, in Al Qasas, before that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, what does He say? Wala tadu ma Allahi ilahan akhir, la ilaha illa Hu. So then He says, Kullu shayin halikun illa wajha. So now the ayat mean the same thing that everything will perish except for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But the ayat of Rahman is connecting that day of judgment and that wahdaniyah and that oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and that tawheed to His rububiyah and asma wa sifat. Whereas the ayah in Surah Al-Qasas, because we read it within the context, وَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. Don't uh, worship or supplicate or call on to any deity besides Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the second ayah is connecting the day of judgment and his uniqueness and his oneness to your poverty in needing him and worshipping him. al uluhiyah Very important benefit that. Then the Sheikh talks about how they make that wheel, and we've talked about that before. And the Sheikh responds to that by saying, number one, it goes against what is apparent from the words. I think there's still some time. It goes against the ijma of the salaf. We've had these as, um, as, as responses to them before as well. But also, if we were to say that the face of Allah refers to the reward of Allah, then some of the reward of Allah can be seen. Whereas the face of Allah cannot be seen in life of this dunya. Also, the Shaykh says, the word dhu is being used, the Arabic language. Also, the Shaykh says, what is the correlation between face and reward? Yes, it can be used, as we see in the ayah in Surah Al-Insan, but kullu shayin halikun illa wajha. Everything will perish except for the reward of Allah. That doesn't make sense now, that majaz. Because it's not just the reward of Allah that will remain. There's going to be punishment on the Day of Judgment. There's going to be justice. There's going to be judgment. There's so many different sifat that will remain. The Sheikh also gives us, as a response to them, to say, uh, this is similar to what we were saying about the reward, is that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he went up on the night of uh, Al-Mi'raj, he saw the nur of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, did you see Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did you see his face? So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, Hijabuhu Nur, his hijab, he has several veils, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and all of them are made of light. Had they been exposed, lahrakat, then everything would have then perished and burnt. Subhat wajhi, man ilayhi basir, min khalqi. Everything would then perish from where his eyesight, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, would end. So the Shaykh is using that also to say that had face meant reward, then everything would perish because the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exposed to the creation, everything would, would perish. I think we'll have to stop here now, isn't it? I think we're getting ready to pray. Okay, that's actually worked out all right because next is Ithbat al yadain affirmation of the two hands and then the two eyes. And like I've said, in that there is a principle of understanding the muthanna, which is the dual form, as well as the mufrad, which is the single form, as well as the jam, which is the plural form, uh, with Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Uh, the people of Ta'wil try to use the dual form to prove their Ta'wil, but we have uh, the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih when it comes to uh, the dual form 
And the, we'll talk about this, inshallah, next week. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us the best of tawfiq and success on the day of judgment. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes the best day our last day and our best actions our last ones. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has mercy on us on that day. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects us and takes us in a manner that he is pleased with us for not angered with us in the slightest. How that? Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Farakallah fi'ikum. See you guys next week, inshallah.